welcome to the uh, informational slash oversight hearing of the Committee on Aging and Long-Term Care here in the California Assembly. Uh, I am Assemblymember Mariko Yamada, Chair of the Committee, and uh, we are holding this hearing today entitled The Community-Based Adult Services Transition uh, Impacts to Participants, Families, and Communities. Uh, today, today's hearing is scheduled to be about two hours in duration, but I said a little earlier that uh, depending upon the interest and the number of individuals interested in presenting public testimony, that's also a very important part uh, of our hearing today. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's traveled a long distance and uh, to everyone who's helped make today's hearing possible. Um, the reason we are having this hearing today uh, is that uh, our office uh, has been um, the recipient of a number of uh, both concerns and complaints about the uh, ongoing transition uh, from the elimination of the adult day health um, uh, benefit as an optional Medi-Cal benefit into the establishment of uh, the Community-Based Adult Services, or CBAS, program. Uh, we all know that our state continues to face uh, some extremely daunting fiscal challenges, and you know the fact that uh, adult day health uh, was considered an optional benefit certainly made it, uh, you know, a, a target, frankly, for elimination. When it's not mandated uh, in the law, it then becomes uh, subject to uh, other uh, budget actions. Uh, so with that, we, we understand the difficult framework that our state is in. However, uh, also understanding that adult day health uh, program services had been a 30-year-plus-long program that had been shown and demonstrated uh, its uh, usefulness, uh, not only uh, from a fiscal standpoint, but from a uh, physical and social and medical standpoint to the consumers and the families that were recipients of these benefits, uh, that uh, there were a series of uh, legal actions, uh, both uh, uh, when the program was proposed for a three-day program, uh, as well as its outright elimination. Uh, fortunately, uh, the courts prevailed uh, on the side of the plaintiffs to ensure that uh, a measure of these services in a strategic and targeted way would be maintained in our state. Uh, there were other uh, actions taken, of course, by the legislature uh, that did uh, vote to eliminate the adult day health benefit with the understanding that there would be a step down or strategic uh, number of services maintained at our state level. We were, of course, as the legislature, surprised and saddened when that step down program, uh, keeping adults free from institutions uh, in AB 96, uh, was unexpectedly vetoed, and there set off a firestorm of activity after that. Um, we won't go into all the details. We may be hearing some of that from some of our witnesses uh, as we proceed during the hearing this afternoon. But what we find ourselves now uh, facing is uh, uh, a series of deadlines that were brought forward by uh, the settlement agreement uh, that was reached uh, last uh, December, it was, I believe, uh, between uh, the state and uh, the, pla the lead plaintiff happened to be a constituent in my district. Uh, and uh, since that time, I know that there have been efforts on all sides to try to make sense of how we are going to continue to deliver uh, community-based services that we know are cost-effective as well as uh, humane and uh, really actually uh, save the state money uh, and save communities uh, uh, in many ways their lives uh, that we uh, are still hearing many many complaints about how this transition is going forward it's been uh, very difficult not only for the consumers but for those who are trying to administer this transition uh, and frankly a series of letters um, has been exchanged uh, between members of the legislature and, and the administration the department uh, that we all look forward to hearing from in, in just a few minutes uh, about, uh, frankly, the workload, the uh, delays in the appeals, uh, the capacity that we have uh, as a state and certainly as a provider uh, network to get uh, these services delivered. 
uh, to the people who need them so desperately. Uh, the other piece of the framing uh, that I would like to put out is something that's undeniable. We all know what the demographics are uh, in our nation, in our state, in our local communities. Uh, and with all of the uh, changes that are coming forward with uh, the implementation of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, uh, the Coordinated Care Initiative, uh, all of the, uh, the multiple changes and, and ones that I embrace and applaud in many respects, uh, how are we going to ensure that these most vulnerable Californians uh, who are uh, very well benefited by these very important adult day health services, uh, in my mind, is, is no less important than childcare is in our state. Uh, the protective issues are very similar in the two populations. Uh, we cannot leave uh, dependent children alone in their homes to fend for themselves. We cannot leave dependent adults at home. Uh, to fend for themselves. And uh, we certainly do not want to uh, make institutionalization the uh, only alternative, because not only is it not as, um, as pleasant many times, it's, it's also more expensive. Mm -hmm.